I want to add my welcome to the other voices you've heard today. My name is Jana Fonts, and thank you so much for joining me in worship. We are continuing our celebration of Easter. It's our third week, and we are watching the resurrection ripple out from those few frightened women who went to the tomb in the morning. We're going to be in the book of Luke today, and Luke talks about how when those women came back to the other disciples and shared their description of seeing angels, their story sounded like meaningless chatter to everyone else. It's now the afternoon of Easter Day, and a couple of disciples have decided it is time to go home. Luke 24, verses 13 and 14. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. See, the movement of Jesus is over the time of miracles and new life has come to an end. The music has been shut off. The decorations are being taken down. They've closed the food and drink tables. There's no reason to stay in Jerusalem. There's no reason for them to stay together. Jesus was the center of this community. He held the hopes and the dreams and the leadership that made them family to each other. But he's gone. Empty tomb or not, there is no king. And so there is no kingdom. These two seem to have been the first to pack up their things and hit the road. No matter how confused or sad they were, it was time to go to Emmaus where they lived and to try to start their old life back up. One of the disciples is named Cleopas, and we think potentially that his wife Mary is the other one. She's with him, and according to the Gospel of John, Mary supported Jesus during his ministry. In fact, she was at the crucifixion, and she watched the whole beautiful story end in horror. Have you ever thought that time to go home? Have you ever had that time to go home feeling? It's a letdown. It's usually full of tiredness. Sometimes there's disappointment, and sometimes there's gratitude, and sometimes there's a mix of both. But, you know, you have to know what to let go of and how to move on, right? Cleopas and Mary are the first to head back as the band of Jesus' followers begin to come apart. What took three years to build is disintegrating in three days. Luke 24, verses 15 to 19. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? And he asked them, What things? So Mary and Cleopas have done the hard work of acceptance, and they are heading home. Their grief is as heavy as bricks. They barely notice the stranger that joins them and tries to cheerfully strike up a conversation. Their eyes are so full of sadness, so shut with loss, so blinded with disappointment and broken dreams that they don't know who they've been joined by. 
they only see a traveler like them getting out of Jerusalem while the getting is good. But the stranger wants to hear their story. The stranger is clearly out of touch with all that has been lost and the utter destruction they have just been through. The stranger has no clue what they're facing and how dark the world has become around them. And he should know. There used to be good news to share, but now there's just news. So they tell him. Luke 24, verses 19 to 24. They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it's now the third day since these things took place. And moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. And some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it as the women had said, but they did not see him. How is it possible to communicate all that has been lost? How can they help the stranger understand all that they are missing? Jesus was mighty in deed and word, just like Moses. He was the one that could lead them out of their slavery to the Romans and into the freedom of being God's people ruled by the Messiah. Even the way the story ends is baffling. Where did the body go and what did the women's vision mean? But the end of their story is they did not see him. No matter how many times they tell the story, it has the same ending. It's why they're going home. There is loss, grief, rethinking, trying to make sense of, fear, disappointment, frustration, anger, and a tumult of other feelings. But there is no vision. Luke 24, verses 25 to 27. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. And something shifts. A new perspective from an unexpected place. The ignorant stranger is full of insight and wisdom. The ignorant stranger takes the news that Cleopas and Mary have to tell and reframes it. He seems to see more than they can see. He seems to understand something about God and the world and tragedy that they have never understood. He takes up those beautiful scriptures that have told the story of the people of God and shows how the redemption and the love in those scriptures are at work in the very center of their tragedy. He makes sense of their pain, and he opens their story to a different ending. What if they did not see him is not the end of the story. Luke 24, verses 28 to 30. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. 
But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it's almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was with them at table, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. As the scriptures have been opened, so these two disciples' hearts have been opened as well. They welcome this wonderful stranger to their table. He has done so much for them. They are home, but the reason they are there has changed. They're home now in order to offer him hospitality, giving what they can to help him on his journey. Their eyes can now see what the Bible is saying in a new way. And they respond with compassion and generosity for this vulnerable stranger. And their hospitality completes the revelation. Luke 24, verses 31 to 35. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem and they found the 11 and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. It was time to go home. It was time to go home to the truth of scripture. It was time to go home to the experience of Jesus' presence. Their foolish lack of understanding and their slow hearts are reoriented back to Jesus. The story has always been about him. And now even more, after the loss of so much, the story is about him and what he does with death. Home is not Emmaus, but home is the community of believers in Jerusalem where the movement will continue. The bricks of grief and disillusionment are lifted off their backs as they rush back to Jerusalem with good news to share that Jesus is alive and everything they hoped for and more than they imagined is true. And that's our good news today, Salem. Jesus is alive in the midst of all the that loss that COVID-19 has created. He wants to open our eyes to the powerful words of scripture and the wonder of his presence. He wants to meet us where we are in our homes and welcome us to our true home, full of peace and hope and life in him. And no tomb can stop him now or us. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, that you come to meet us in our homes right now. Thank you that you know about our losses and our slow hearts. For my friends and I, come, set our hearts on fire through your word and your presence. Give us eyes to see all that you are offering us today and all the places where you are waiting for us. Amen.